here from Back Road Buddies and the video we want to share with you today is about our ECHO organization. Now this video is a little long so if you'd like to just jump to a particular section look in the description below for the timeline and you can do that. Now we've been on the road for almost a month now in season five in our ECHO so we think we've got things dialed in pretty well. But of course, over time, that's gonna change and how you want your stuff organized is gonna be a lot different than ours. Um, but we're hoping you get something out of this video of, for one, all the things we bring with us on a long seven month trip, um, where we put it all, how much stuff you can actually store in the Echo, and maybe some organizational tips along the way. So we hope you'll learn at least one little thing <laughs> Now, there's several principles we try to follow when we do our organization. Um, besides having a place for everything and everything in its place, we try, there's a couple other principles we try to follow. One is that things are stored near where we think we're going to use them. So you don't have to go way across to the you know, if you need something outside, you're going inside to get it or, um, you know, going from one end of the rig to the other when you're trying to cook or something. The other principle is the things we use the most often are more easily accessible than the items that we only use once in a while. We can tuck those a little further away. Now there's exceptions to that. For example, the fire extinguisher. We hope we never have to use the fire extinguisher, but the time that we do need it, we want it really handy. So there are a few exceptions to those principles, but in general, that's what we try to follow. So we're gonna take you around the rig, um, kind of area by area. We're gonna start on the outside, work our way around, and then work our way in the inside and go from the back to the front. So number one is the generator compartment. Now this over here is where our batteries live and there's a pump in there as well. We don't store anything in there. And then this is the toilet cassette. We don't store anything in there either. Now this compartment is where if you get the generator option on the Echo, the generator would live, but we did not get the generator. Instead, we have two batteries. Now, in here is basically where we store all most of the tools that we take along with us. Um, we'll cover exactly all the tools that we take with us in a different video, but just a lot of general tools for repair and maintenance and a little bit of construction if we want to do a little mod. And we have them organized in these bins. There's this bin here. And then there's two of these Milwaukee... Let me see, what, I forget what they're called. Yeah, these are called Milwaukee Packout, and they come with some removable bins, and that's what these red things are here. So we kind of pulled those out and we use them in various places in the rig, a couple of them right here. Um, this let us utilize more of the space. Um, these two Milwaukee Packouts, they lock together and then that other bin just goes on top. And so there's this little bit of space in front. What you have to make sure you leave room for though is the latch coming in here. So you can't put a bin right here. Now also in this compartment, we have all of the supplies we need to do our electrical hookup. So we have a Hughes surge protector. We have a couple dog bones. Um, and we actually have a regular extension cord as well. And then also a tarp. A tarp comes in handy if you need to get under the vehicle and it keeps you dry and clean, hopefully, if you need to get under the vehicle to do some maintenance or inspect something. Um, and also he's got a power drill over here tucked into the side as well. So number two is the water compartment. Now we added this organizer from, I think it's called Organized Obi, and that's where we kind of store all of our water related items. 
So we have our fresh water hose um, along with a RV water filter. There's um, this RV water fill. And then um, down here is our siphon hose. Now we keep a bottle of hand sanitizer right here because this is where we would dump our gray. And then we'd also dump um, the cassette right here. So when we're done, it's nice to have hand sanitizer nice and handy. And um, we also have some in other locations around the coach. Um, and then down here is also, um, we have a spare sprayer. We have this called a wa water bandit. Now this is in case you have a water hookup or water faucet that doesn't have threads on it. And this rubber just kind of makes a tight seal around the faucet so you can do a fill from a faucet that does not have threads on it. And then also here is our blowout plug for when we're getting ready to winterize. And then in this pouch here, is um, we have our decalcification tablets for our water heater. And then we also have the water heater filter. And that's because we replaced the water heater filter with um, the anti-freeze kit. And that takes the place of the water filter. However, when we need to decalcify the water heater, we actually need to put that water filter back in. And then you'll also notice over here, we have this lanyard hanging here, and this key is the key to the toilet cassette. So when we go to dump it, we don't have to go running inside the rig to get the key or carry a whole bunch of keys on us. We try to um, reduce the number of keys we actually carry with us. Um, and then down below here, this is a quick release a sprayer that we can hook into this outdoor water. We only use that to um, spray off like our hiking boots or our bikes or um, our paddle board or whatever. So we are a little less concerned about it being so close to the gray water dump because we don't use it to drink. We don't drink the water coming out of that hose. And then, and here is the Americanizer which we hook up to the sewer hose, which helps us um, dump the toilet cassette into a regular RV dump. We have the rubber gloves. I'm not gonna touch those. There's some rags in there. There's a little scrub brush. So these are kind of, we keep try to keep this stuff away from our fresh water. Number three is our super slider. That's this tube mounted underneath the rig that we use to store the sewer hose in. Now, if you've been following our channel, you'll notice this is not how we originally installed it. We originally had it ending there at the water compartment. Um, but the sewer hose that, we, that came with our rig and is supposed to be 10 feet long, and I don't know why ours was not even close to 10 feet. And when we got to the first campground, we couldn't even reach the sewer um, connection at our campsite. So we ran out and bought a 15 foot Camco RhinoFlex hose, knowing that the super slider tube will extend out further. However, we had a hard time figuring out where to mount it because the water compartment is in the way and the spare tires in the way and we didn't want that super slider hanging down lower and lowering our clearance. Um, so we actually ran out and bought a 10 foot Rhino Flex hose along with a clear elbow adapter and those both fit in there but we had to remount the super slider at an angle to avoid the water compartment and kind of snuck it in there beside the um, spare tire. So everything fits in there now. And actually we normally keep the Americanizer in there as well. So I'm not quite sure why it's in the water compartment right now. Um, now you'll notice on the door we have this little carabiner and that's because even before we hit the road we uh, 
lost the door to the super slider. Not quite sure what happened there, but we put that little carabiner on there to try to keep from losing that again. Number four is our roof bag. So up on our roof, it kind of fits in here nicely in where there's a gap from the solar panels. And we keep things that we don't access very often up here. So this is the inflatable paddle board along with the paddle and the pump for it. And then we have our two backpacking backpacks along with our backpacking tent. Um, inside the backpacks are the gear we need for backpacking but not for day hikes. And we'll cover that in a separate video where we take with us on hikes and backpacking trips. Number five is the gear garage. Now this is a wonderful space in the Echo. Um, we rigged it up so we actually got our two Rad Power um, Xband 5 bikes, e-bikes in here. Um, so we, we have other, on our modification video, you can see how we actually um, rigged that up. Um, in addition, we added a shelf up here. And on the shelf, we have our sand-free mat, our moonshade, and our two camp chairs, which are currently out over there. We also kind of utilize every ounce of space in here. We put our hiking boots down between the tracks, between our bikes, along with, um, I think there's a pair of sandals back in there, and our surf shoes. We have our trekking poles here, our life jacket, and um, this is our dry sacks that have our um, waterproof and floating pouches for our iPhones plus our camera floats in there. This is our camp sign that we put out when we leave the campsite and are coming back. Um, these are the paneers that go on the bike. Inside there are the bike locks, the um, quick release pedals, and the, and the bike pump. And then on the door we did this stretch net by Organized Obi for our helmets. There's some other little gear in here, a bike, tire repair kit, hat, gloves. Um, so that's on that side. If you notice in here, we have our folding camp table. And let's come around over here. Um, you can look back in here. We have our expandable ladder, plus a couple stadium chairs. And then down here on the end is where we have our day packs we have a small one and a medium one for each of us we have my exercise mat um, we have the chargers for the e-bikes a bag of ropes and a bag of um, uh, bungee cords uh, so i think i think that's about it but it's really packed full in there Now, what you didn't see in there is we own a, a screen shelter, a quick set by Clam. However, that thing is just so big. Um, so the only logical place to put it would be in the gear garage, but there's just no room left for it. And there's no room on the roof. We didn't really want it. It's um, the size of it is just too big. It's bigger than the bumper. Um, or the width of the bumper. It just, there was no place to really put it that we felt comfortable with. I mean, we could have laid it down the center of the living space inside the rig, um, but that meant every time we got somewhere, we'd have to pull it out. And if we stopped somewhere on the road, it would be in the way. So we just decided to leave it at home. That was the one thing we could not find space for. Number six is the exterior um, kitchen compartment. So, I mean, if you were following around here, this is the propane. We don't store anything in there, and that's the uh, water heater. So nothing's stored in there, and that's our propane quick connect. So the next and last compartment on the outside is this. Um, this is where, if you get the tailgate package, this is where the um, stove and fridge and sink go but we pulled that out of our rig 
even though it came with it we didn't want it um, so in a sense this is still kitchen stuff and um, kind of roadside emergency things as well plus maybe some miscellaneous items so this is our black stone griddle we made a little protective board to set it out on when we cook so we don't damage anything that we set it on um, there's grease trays and items back in there um, and then in this pouch we have all our grill tools like spatulas so that keeps clean in there and then this is the quick connect hose for the griddle um, then this pouch contains well it normally contains our tablecloth and clips and bungees if we the clips won't work on the table um, you notice we have a element fire extinguisher so when we're cooking outside we have something quickly available to save us there um, in here we have all our kind of insect repellent some thermocell and a citronella candle and then we have a um, dust buster and there's a charging cord in there somewhere and this um, I should have mentioned was a shelf that we built so we could kind of arrange everything in here nicely and we have a little folding step stool some spare grease bins this is part of our air compressor Vier air compressor that we travel with um, I think those are um, emergency beacons. We have a safety vest. Um, there's a couple emergency triangles in there somewhere. Now these are, oh, I think they're over here. Um, these are the Go Treads traction boards that we also use as levelers. These are a couple of wheel chocks. We actually travel with four of these two by sixes that we use to help level two of them are currently underneath the tires to level out our rig today. If it needs more than that, we go to the go treads. And I think, oh, there's a NOCO emergency starter. Um, starter battery back in there somewhere. And then, um, oh, that's parts for the air compressor and I don't remember what's in this one. Oh, this is uh, the tire repair kit. So all kinds of goodies. So here's the NOCO emergency starter battery. So all kinds of goodies tucked in there. Moving inside number seven we have the bedroom. So we actually stored quite a bit in here. Um, starting off with these overhead cabinets. Um, Keith actually gets all of his shirts and pants in there. I don't. Um, <laughs> so I think in the blog post I list exactly what all I have in here. I use these soft bins too to help make it easier to pull things down grab what I want so I have all my shirts up here my t-shirts my hiking shirts um, some thermal tops um, a fleece top and a jeans ja a jeans shirt um, so that's just shirts for me for me for my pants I actually have those down here in the War, what's called the wardrobe. Now we took out the um, we took out the closet rod in here because we thought it was pretty worthless and we added a shelf. So in the top shelf I have this nice soft bin and here I was able to get all of my pants. Um, jeans, hiking pants, shorts, spanks, a couple bathing suits, bike shorts. Um, so basically on my bottoms if you want to think of it that way and then underneath here I put a plastic bin for all my shoes I am the only one that uses this Keith doesn't have as many shoes 
So he just, most of his shoes are in the gear garage, his hiking boots and his Tiva sandals. And the only other pair of shoes he has with him is his trail runners, but he has usually wearing those. Um, so I have sandals. I actually have a nice pair of flats back there. Um, but the plastic bin kind of contains all the dirt and sand and keeps it from getting around in the rest of the rig. Um, then in between the beds, let's move that out of the way. In between the beds, we put these boxes. Now the Echo comes with two um, cushions that you can put in here and turn this into a queen size bed going the other way. We weren't going to use that, so we pulled that out and added these storage boxes. Um, so Keith has one. I have one. I have all my various jackets in here. Again, I carry a lot more jackets than he does, um, and plus all my hats and gloves. Um, we're on the road for seven months, so we kind of have to pack for three seasons from snow to blistering heat. So. He has a couple jackets in his, but then he has extra stuff in his. There's a sewing kit. There's a hair cutting kit. There is um, a first aid kit and um, exercise stretch bands all inside of his. So he was able to get a lot of other stuff in there. Now this is the everything keeper that we installed. It's a little stiff yet. Um, we kind of keep our spare keys in here. Keith's got a couple of his glasses in here, but we put our phones in here at night and charge them. Or um, I have an electric toothbrush and that comes in a little travel case. And when I need to charge that, I put that in there as well to charge. So it's kind of nice and out of the way. And the cords kind of feed through that, that hole. And then for, um, we originally were doing our slippers here um, I'll show you later where we moved them, but um, the solution we had, it, it broke and we need to repair it. So that's why the slippers are back here again. Um, so we each have one of these drawers. That's where all our underwear and socks go, sports bras. Um, I have a, some bandanas. When I'm not wearing my belt, that goes in there as well. But on Keith's side, well, he is... He has underwear and socks in there as well. On the his wardrobe side, we'd actually remove the door and we put our clothes hamper in there. And it's probably easier to show you this space if I lift it up. Um, yeah, we normally keep all our bedding on the beds. We don't have to pull it off for any reason. Um, we do each have two pillows and we normally like to sit up against this wall. Some people sit up at that, but we're tall. I don't like scrunched under there. So that's what we use the extra pillow for. So that's the one thing we still kind of do a little bit of what's called the camper van shuffle. So at night, these get in the way and we actually put them up front in the dinette overnight. So that's the one thing we do shuffle back and forth every day. Now let's see if I can get this bed to lift up. So under here, um, so behind the laundry basket, we have a laundry backpack that we use. We put our extra toilet paper and towels back here. Um, but this bag contains our one of our sleeping bags, air mattresses, an inflatable pillow, pillow and um, the associated compression sack for backpacking. And then the other one, goes in there's somewhat of a deep well here um, so that's where the other sleeping bag goes for our backpacking trip and then you'll notice we actually switched laundry detergent this year this we really like these are laundry detergent sheets not dryer sheets so the detergent is just a sheet that you throw in the washing machine and it even dissolves in cold water so this takes up so much less space you don't have to worry about it leaking and spilling out anywhere. So we kind of store a spare one in this shallow little tray. And the other one is in a pouch in this uh, 
laundry backpack that we use to carry our dirty clothes over to the laundry and our clean clothes back. Now, on my side, it lifts up as well. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. And I don't have the deep well like there is on the other side. I don't know if you have enough lighting here to see. Um, but it does still have this little shallow tray. Um, we put our spare dish towel, um, dish cloth, and our spare hand towel, which we're actually using our spare. We have the other one in the dirty laundry already. And then we just store our FMCA sticker there. We're going to need that later because we're going to be camping at their campground in Cincinnati later in the season. Number eight is the bathroom. Now in here, um, I think we covered some of this in our mod video, but we mounted two waste baskets underneath the sink. One is for garbage and you see they come off pretty easy and one is for recyclables. And then behind the door or wall here, these hooks came with the Echo and that's where we hang our main bath towels. But then we added a couple hooks on this side for our washcloths. We added this wire basket, holds our shampoo and conditioner and our hairbrush. It also contains our hand soap when we're driving down the road. And then the hook that Winnebago provided is where our hand towel lives. And then we also added another hook on the side of the medicine cabinet here for this is for cleaning. It's a cleaning rag for cleaning, wiping down the walls, um, wiping off the sink, um, and cleaning the bathroom. This is the medicine cabinet. And you notice these red bins came from that Milwaukee toolbox in the uh, generator compartment. So we use one to put all our toothbrushes and toothpaste in, including our electric, my electric toothbrush. Keith doesn't use one. And then down here, we did this for small items. We each have one, just, um, you know, nail clippers, Vaseline, uh, eye drops, just little items. These little boxes we use to soak and clean our Invisalign trays. If you haven't noticed, um, we're both finishing up an Invisalign treatment to correct some dental problems. We have deodorant mouthwash, hand lotion, rubbing alcohol, and um, hydrogen peroxide back in there. And then we also mounted these nice little zippered pouches. They're Velcroed onto the wall. And those hold things like our razors, um, blades, our extra Invisalign trays, our Invisalign case, um, the charger for Keith's razor. And luckily his charger is long enough that he can leave the razor in here and plug it into the outlet down here. Um, my cord on, this is my electric toothbrush travel case and the cord on that is pretty short. So that's why I move it over to the everything keeper when I need to charge that. And then tucked behind the toilet here is we have this little case. This plastic bag was actually what our bed sheets came in. So we reused that here and I uh, we also use that if you noticed on the the insect, the thermocell bag that we put all that stuff in out in the exterior kitchen compartment. Um, so this is where we keep kind of toilet stuff. This is toilet seal conditioner. Um, this is the toilet chemicals. And then, well, this isn't really toilet related. This is, I forgot the name of it. It's like a rubber conditioner. Um, it's for um, treating the gaskets around the windows and doors and compartments um, to treat those. 
Number nine is the galley or kitchen. Um, so we've got a lot of stuff stored in here as well. Um, you notice we've, we added a little hook where we put our pot holders. Um, this is our paper towel holder. It's the ratchet type. Um, I guess we tore off too many at dinner today. <laughs> um, we mounted a bug zapper up here from the ceiling. So that's really nice. And a hook over here for our fly swatter. Now moving back into this cabinet, we have our Instant Pot, our Omnia oven, and a collapsible colander in there. It fits nicely. And then moving down on the back wall, we have our spice rack that Keith made. Um, this uh, plastic is actually from an old fairing we had on our camping van that cracked. So we're able to reuse that plastic. That was really nice. Um, this net bag is where we store all our fresh fruits and vegetables that we don't have in the fridge. Um, this is really nice so they don't get smushed while we're traveling. So when we're set up for camp it goes here but when we're underway we actually move it over to and this is these little ceiling hooks here that we hook it into so then this well the tea kettle isn't there when we're underway but this can swing around and it doesn't bump into anything so you don't split open your tomatoes or whatever you have happen to have in there um, now kind of moving along down here, we added a hook on the side here to put this um, cutting board and sink cover. So when we're underway, we actually put that down and put the dishcloth here so if the faucet drips in, it'll absorb that. Um, but when we come to camp, we take that off there so we have full use of the sink. Um, we also use that sink after lunch to store our dirty lunch dishes because we only like doing dishes at dinner time so we'll skip that um, and so that's that now moving into the drawers here this is basically where all of the utensils are so in this bag on top is all our silverware and i also have a little paring knife in this zippered pouch and this easily pulls out, takes advantage of that vertical space, but we pull it out, take it over the picnic table or over to the dinette table when we're eating. And then we have full access to all of our cooking utensils in here. Um, and then if you notice, we used yet another one of those bins from the Milwaukee toolbox to put those smaller items in like, you know, vegetable peel and measuring spoon so I don't get lost in with the rest of these. And this is a plastic bin we put in to take advantage of the more vertical space because you see it extends above the sides of the drawer. And then in this little slot here is where we put all our knives. Um, they're all in sheaths. So to protect them, um, we usually make sure that we put them sharp blade up. And notice I made one for my butcher knife because I didn't have one. It's just cardboard and um, duct tape or monster tape. I don't remember what. Uh, or gorilla tape, I guess it is. Um, but we put the sharp blade up so when we're bouncing down the road, we're not damaging that blade. And then on the bottom drawer here this is where all our dishes are this is our microwave popcorn popper love that thing um, we have large plates small plates um, we have storage containers uh, bowls mixing bowls measuring cups uh, collapsible um, box grater we have ziploc bags um, now we only carry I think six large ones and six small ones and we wash and reuse them so they'll last for years these are the freezer type so I know a lot of people really like going to the silicon ones but they are just so thick and bulky and take up so much space we actually just use the plastic ones but we wash and reuse them 
Um, this is a nice little funnel, um, little collapsible guy. And then this tall container is for my immersion blender if I want to blend something up. And speaking of which, we'll go in this cabinet underneath the stove. We kind of did some mods in here. Hopefully there's enough light that you can see. Let me get my handy dandy little headlamps work great as photo lighting um so we attached a bin on this door a couple bins on this door so this is our um trash bags for our waste baskets our soap dish soap and then on this side we have sugar teas three different teas vanilla and honey so that's kind of nice and handy in the morning for making tea and coffee. Now if you notice in here, we added this shelf. We have an induction cooktop here. We have a roll of aluminum foil. And this is where, if you can see in there, that's where our immersion, hand immersion blender lives. Now this here bin is our dish rinse bin that we use doing dishes. This is our 10 piece mag magma I think magma cookware and then we have a knife sharpener in here as well what also lives down there is the tea kettle fits right in here and the base fits inside the bin and then tucked way in the back here is these little um, soap tablets and we started using these instead of buying the bottles well here like the we used to get gojo so these bottles here we don't buy these anymore we just reuse the bottle and these are just little tablets you put in there add water let it dissolve and then you have foaming soap it um, takes up a lot less room and it's nice to not have to waste all that plastic packaging and then kind of to finish off the the galley there of course is the fridge and i'll just like show you what this looks like to give you an idea of how much space you have in here see we've got a couple pints of ice cream some strawberries ice cube trays um, yeah, I don't know, you can kind of see what all we have in here. Um, the issue we do have with this is a couple things. One is you notice how close these shelves are. Um, well, actually, a can of beer will fit up in that one, but they are really short. So most of your tall items have to go in this one bottom drawer. So milk, iced tea, juice, um, yogurt big large containers of yogurt so you have to be mindful of what you can put where and then these um, shelves on the door are also very narrow they only hold one can of beer width um, so some things won't fit like you can fit the um, plastic mail bottle but if you get one of the round jars even the real small one it won't fit in here um, the other issue we had was we'd like to have one of these short to put beer cans across. Um, if you move these close, there's only like one extra little adjustment in between here. So if I move this down and try to put the beer in there, I can't get the beer in and out. So the only sensible place to put it was up here on the top shelf, but we only put two up there because if you see how close that gets to the freezer, there's a couple hinges here. So if we put a beer can on these two ends, it interferes with the freezer closing properly. So we did discover that because there's a little cutout, we can put a little, slightly a little taller item right there in the middle. But that means only two beer cans or two cans of anything can fit in the door. 
um, unless you want to take up space down here, which we kind of run out of door space fairly quickly. So to finish off the galley, we kind of on the opposite wall here, we have the um, hook that Winnebago provided that we hang our dish towel from. So that's where that lives. Um, we have a box of Kleenex that lives up here on top of the, the pantry. Um, when we're underway, that goes up front between the two front seats so it's handy and then this is our pantry um, this top shelf is kind of all our liquids oils vinegars maple syrup liquid smoke um, I forget what else is back in there um, and then this next shelf is kind of our drinks our instant coffee our lemonade and hot chocolate mix this next shelf which is actually one we added and by the way, we added this uh, Velcro strap to make sure those bottles don't fall out or over. And then this shelf, we put our canned goods on. Um, we can put up to six cans on that shelf. Uh, the bottom shelf, we put cans of chicken and boxes of chicken broth. I think we can fit three boxes of broth and four cans of chicken in there. So if that gives you an idea how much space you have in there. Now moving over to the dinette area. This kind of has a multi-uses from eating to um, working on laptops to just socializing. So the storage around here is a little varied as well. Um, starting off around the bench seat. Behind the bench seat is where we store, these are the Van Made Gear shades, window shades for the two front cab doors. Um, the windshield shade will not, it's too long, it won't fit there. So it actually fits nicely along the side of the bench here. So that really worked out. And then this is a, we mainly use this as a pillow, but it is a blanket. So we, it's kind of an emergency blanket if we need one. Um, and then also behind the bench is where we put this lagoon table and we actually include this arm as well and it just slides back there with the shades um, then on the upper cabinet here this is kind of an extension of our pantry since that pantry is rather small so we actually added this shelf um, these bins turned out to be really nice size. We put labels on them so we know what's in each bin. We try to keep like things together. So this one's kind of breakfast snack stuff from peanut butter, popcorn, oatmeal, crackers, granola cereal, brown sugar. Um, you notice so we already changed our mind where we were putting some things. So we pulled that off. But the bins make it really nice. You can pull you can kind of see what's in them um, you've plus you've got the labels um, and you can when you have more than one hand to use you can easily pull those down get to the items in the back um, this bin is more cooking stuff rice potatoes sugar breadcrumbs pasta quinoa or however you pronounce that word and then this is more baking stuff baking powder baking soda powdered buttermilk flour and then some miscellaneous items, toothpicks and vitamins. Um, this bin we already had, it fits nicely behind the support here. Um, we intended it just to be granola bars because they fit in there nicely and we can pull those out without having to pull the bin out. Um, but you know, spare items have worked their way in there. We bought another peanut butter before we use that one up. Um, this bag of tea initially lived up here on the top shelf, but for some reason, every time we finished a drive and opened the cabinet, this would come flying out. So it lives back here now. Um, and then this was another bin we had. We kind of had to have it a little shorter because of the, it's out of the way of that hinge. And this is, um, dried fruit, nuts, and just whatever soup, dried soup. And then the top shelf, we have nothing but light things. So 
they can shift around up there. They're not gonna smush or crunch each other because they're all light. So we have bread, tortillas, a box of iced tea, um, tortilla chips, and uh, beef jerky. <laughs> so just light items on top there. Now underneath here we have another set of everything keepers. Uh, Keith puts his iPad in here and charges it. He charges his Apple Watch in here. He just has a notebook and some other miscellaneous stuff in here, lens cloth. Over here we kind of have little stuff, um, spare batteries, and this has clothes pins and binder clips, uh, scissors, tape, um, our bike keys, lens wipes, a pen. So just the little stuff that you don't want to have flying around or or lose and then up here is where Keith has a hook for his ball cap because he's almost always wearing it so having it somewhere handy he can you know grab it every time he walks out of the rig so that's kind of nice there now down here is kind of what I alluded to earlier when we were in the bedroom is we put added a OB stretchy net here underneath here and this holds our shower flip-flops and was intended to have and did for a while our slippers down here because they're up and out of the way but the uh, little clip we used to mount it broke so we need to fix that or come up with a better solution that won't break on us oh and the last item in the dinette is actually my laptop bag. Um, it kind of lives here most of the time. I was hoping I could get it to fit in the wardrobe cabinet, but it's too thick. I have too much stuff in there <laughs> besides a laptop, external monitor, wireless keyboard, mouse, a um, couple hard drives, some cables, pens. Yeah, it's just headphones kind of everything I need to work on uh, videos and blog posts so it's nice and easy um, but I access this thing all the time so it mainly lives here we generally don't both sit here at the same time um, so sometimes if we do need it to get it out of the way we'll throw it up back in the back on the bed but most of the time it just lives there number 11 the last area is the front cab area there's actually quite a bit of storage up here as well. Um, these two cubbies were what uh, Winnebago added when we removed the entertainment package. We created this third cubby up here. So in this one, we have the insulated curtain that goes up behind the cab here that was provided with the Echo. Um, I have my tripod in here and we have a, this is a divided file where I store any paper I need to keep, keep pamphlets, uh, itinerary, um, whatever, taxes, <laughs> um, goes in there. Um, this front little cubby is just kind of odds and ends. I throw my purse in here. We have our headlamps in here, so they're nice and easy to grab. These are our, um, reusable grocery bags. We have a couple cleaning cloths. I actually took a couple of my hiking water bottles, that is when they're empty and dry, go up here. And this bag is uh, just spare cables um, and chargers. And I'm trying to think, sometimes my sunglasses loop up here as well. And that's about it. Um, so then over here on the right cubby is kind of our electronics and photo gear. So on the top shelf is our WeBoost. Um, we mounted the Verizon hotspot out here because it kept sliding off the shelf. Um, and then underneath here we have, um, I store my two PowerShot cameras. We have an emergency radio. We have a backgammon set, a um, couple decks of cards, GoPro, um, all the various attachments and chargers, and our Bluetooth speaker lives in there. 
So just kind of our, um, oh, we have a Lucy light back in here. So just kind of in general, electronics and games are in there. And then moving down, there are these cubbies that basically came with the Ford Transit. On the passenger side, we have um, our road atlas. Um, loose papers kind of end up there as well till we decide to put them away somewhere. We have this little zippered pouch which has pencils and pens and sharpies and a little field book to record our gas in. We have a flashlight. Um, Keith has his sunglasses and and eyeglasses in there and then this is kind of our little um, medicines and first aid stash so you know pain relievers cough drops cold medicine um, tongs that kind of stuff lives there and then moving down we have these uh, visor organizers so we have eyeglasses we actually store a uh, RV storage access card in there. Um, we have like a lens wipe, uh, reading glasses. I keep reading glasses everywhere. I need them. <laughs> and then this little zipper pouch. I put all our receipts for the month until I kind of go through them at the end of every month. Um, so that's kind of what's in those visors. And then we have um, cup holders, even though there's eight cup holders in here. We always seem to be running out of them because if we have need to keep our water bottles while we're driving down the road because they're not dry, they take up a lot of the spaces. And then moving down here, we have a squeegee for cleaning the windshield after we've been sitting for a while. Bird poop seems to collect up there. We have a little broom and dustpan. We have a level. And then let's see if I can access. There's actually a secret little compartment underneath this passenger seat, but you have to slide it back to access it. Need another set of hands. Um, but if you see down here, we did put a plastic bin in there. We have a couple travel books, business cards, Becker Buddy stickers, and we have a couple um, spare inner tubes for our e-bikes. So that's a nice little storage space. Now, if you notice, um, some of our jackets have a tendency to end up on the backs of the front seats. Um, it just makes them convenient if it's the one we happen to be currently wearing. Um, sometimes we'll use the back of those seats to also dry things out like towels or bathing suits or also use the steering wheel. Um, in addition, you may notice that there's these booster seats and that's so you kind of get the right height for sitting at the table. But we only brought one of them. The Winnebago comes with two. But we felt that we could get this table low enough that we're comfortable without it on this side. So we only brought the one. And then when we're going down the road, this actually lives on the back of the, hangs from the headrest and just sits here on the back of the passenger seat. So it's out of the way and you don't have to figure out where to store that thing. And then finishing up the front cab area as we're losing light here. And don't forget your glove compartment. It's a great place to store things. Um, we have a little container for uh, coins and small bills for laundry and tolls and parking. Um, there's a tire pressure gauge. We keep our Garmin Mini in reach in here. Um, we have a small little tool kit that's easily accessible. It just has like wrenches and pliers in there. You know, our, and then our normal things like uh, owner's manual. Um, what else lives in here? Our little um, park tag for hanging our park pass, which lives in Keith's wallet. And, uh, you know, things like the car registration and car insurance, of course. 
and that kind of wraps up that. And then the only other thing is the Ford actually has quite a bit of storage. I mean, this is a another um, cup holder. But in here, we have, on each door, we have sunblock, insect repellent, um, and hand sanitizer. And then we have two rags. One's just a general cleaning rag and the other is a microfiber that we try to keep a microfiber uh, cloth that we try to keep clean that we use to wipe the inside of the glass in the cab so when it, you get condensation. And then there's also another little compartment down below here and we just have a small small little umbrella in there. So I think I pretty much covered it all. Well, thanks for watching. Now, if you want more details, especially links to some of the items that we take with us, you can look in the description below for a link to our related blog post, and we go in much more details and have links to different things in there. So go check that out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Ta-ta for now. Mm -hmm.